Okay, let's keep going. So we've talked about the three kinds of limits. There is the easy kind where you just plug the number in. There's the kind where you plug the number in and you get zero over zero. And you use like either factoring or rationalizing to, uh, to simplify the limit and make it into an easy kind. And the kind we're talking about right now is when you put the number in and you get not zero over zero. In that case, you can kind of expect one of three answers, either infinity, minus infinity, or undefined. And I think we should just practice some questions just to see how, just to make sure we understand what's going on. So I'm just going to throw down some questions here and uh, hopefully you can do them. I'll just write down maybe three or four questions here. Now the limit, it doesn't have to go to zero. It can really, it can go to anything. How about something like this? I'm going to give the same one, except I'm going to put a power of four on the bottom. And let's make this, uh, say, why don't we look at these three limits, okay? So here we're taking x to be the r on the right-hand side of 0. So that means x here is a small positive number. If I take a small positive number and I raise it to the power of 4, I even get a smaller positive number. So x to the 4, it's still a small positive number. And 2 divided by a small positive number gives me a big positive number. So that answer is going to be plus infinity. How about over here? This one, I'm just going to draw this one out to help us under visualize it. So here's negative 1. We're taking the negative 1, we're taking x to be on the right of negative 1, okay? What's an example of a number that's really close to minus 1, but on the right-hand side of negative 1? Maybe something like negative 0.99, okay? And if I go negative 0.99 plus 1, I get a small positive number, right? Do you agree with that? I get 0.01, .01, right? Which is a small positive number. And then I cube it. I cube a small positive number. It's still a small positive number. It's even smaller. So really what I have at the end is I have negative 2 divided by a small positive number. So that's going to be a big negative number. So the answer is minus infinity, right? Remember, a negative divided by a positive is a negative. How about this guy? Well, negative 2. Here I'm, here, uh, oh, sorry. Do you know what I meant to do? So this is, I wanted, these are the same question, aren't they? I wanted to, uh, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, let's, let's do the left-hand limit now, okay? So this time I'm taking a value of x to the left of minus 1. What's an example of a number that's close to minus 1 but to the left of it? How about negative 1.01? .01, something like that, huh? What if I put like negative 1.01 .01 inside here? Negative 1.01 .01 plus 1 that's going to turn out to be a small negative number, right? When I cube a small negative number, it's still a small negative number, right? Remember, cubing a negative number doesn't change the sign of it, right? Um, if I would have raised it to the fourth power, then it would have changed sign to a positive. But, like, do you guys remember this kind of stuff? Like, for example, negative 2. That's supposed to be a bracket. For example, negative 2 to the power of 3 means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8, right? So you see when I cube a negative, it stays negative. But if I raise it to an even power, like 4 or 2 or something, then this turns out to be a positive, right? It actually turns out to be positive 16. So all I'm trying to say here is when I take a, a number to the left of minus 1, such as this number, negative 1.01, .01, and I add 1 to it, I get... I get a small negative, right? And when I cube a small negative number, I still have a small negative number. So when I do negative 2 divided by a small negative number, well, those negatives cancel and give me a plus, and I, it turns out to be a big positive number. So this is plus infinity.
Okay. What if we would have uh, maybe done something like this? The limit is x goes to minus 1 from the left of negative 2 over x plus 1 to the 4. Let's see how that one's a little di bit different. Well, if I take a number again on the left of minus 1, but close to minus 1, such as negative 1.01, .01, and I add 1 to it, I get negative 0.01, .01, which is a small negative number. But when I take this small negative number now and raise it to the power of 4, it's going to become a small positive number. So really what I have here is I have negative 2 divided by a small positive number. And that's going to be a big negative number, so my answer is minus infinity. Okay, So I hope that's starting to make a little bit of sense by now. You just have to analyze what's going on and uh, work it out. And by the way, notice here, look at these two guys here. If I would have asked you this question, what is the limit as x goes to negative 1 of this quantity? The way you would do this question is you'd first do the right limit, then you do the left limit, and then you look at your two answers. Since these two answers are different, we know this two-sided limit here, this is undefined. Okay. So when you're in this third case, not 0 over 0, and you're asked a two-sided limit, often, most often the strategy is to go and look at the left and right limits and see if those answers are the same or not. Okay. Why don't we try one like that? Just let me erase this first. So I'm going to ask you a two-sided limit, which is of the type not 0 over 0. In other words, type 3. Let's see what we have here. Why don't we try something like this. The limit as x goes to negative 1 of, let's do something strange, like negative 10 over uh, x plus 10 squared and on top we'll say negative 7 okay how do so we we say to ourselves the first thing we should do is let's put this number in okay when i put negative 10 into the top and bottom the top of course turns out to be negative 7 and the bottom turns out to be 0 squared which is 0 so I'm in the category not 0 over 0. So this is type 3. So I kind of know the answer is going to be one of these guys here. Now the strategy is to evaluate the, the left and right limits separately and see if we get the same answer or if we get a different answer. So let me just quickly write these two down. And we'll work each of those out just by analyzing what's going on. In the first example, I'm taking uh, x to be a number to the right of negative 10, okay? So something like this, maybe negative 9.99 or something. When I do negative 9.99 plus 10, I get a small positive, right? And a small positive squared is still a small positive. So I have like a negative 7 divided by a small positive number, which is a big positive, uh, sorry, a big negative number. So the answer here is minus infinity. How about on this limit? Now I'm going to the left of minus 10. Maybe like minus 10.1. Minus 10.1 plus 10 is negative 0 0.1. In other words, a small negative. A small negative squared turns into a small positive number. So I have negative 7 divided by a small positive number. So that's minus infinity. And now I'm finally ready to answer my original question. These two answers, they're the same, aren't they? Since they're the same, the left and right limits, we know the two-sided limit here is that common value, so the answer is minus infinity. Okay? If these happen to turn out to be different, then up here we would have just said undefined.